Hello, everyone. Hello, San Antonio. I'm Michael Genhart. I am the author of Accordionly, of What on Oba Make Music. This is a book that I made with the illustrator. Her name is Priscilla Buris, and it was published by Imagination Press. It is a thrill for me to be here with all of you to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. I do want to thank the San Antonio Public Library and Don in particular for inviting me to be here. And I want to thank Colton. Uh, Valentine is here to uh, create his magic uh, with the mural. And, and Nicolas Valdez, the accordionist that we're going to hear later. Es una fiesta. And I just love, um, love being a part of this. So it is um, just especially um, kind of heartfelt for me to be able to share this book with you because it's based on my family and family tradition. And I, I really hope that it's a story that connects with, with all of you. So I'm gonna talk about a variety of things this uh, now, including or starting with why I, um, why I started writing books, what inspired me. This is a, a picture of, of mini me. This is me, I think in second or third grade. And uh, I just love reading books. The Story of Ferdinand was one of my favorite picture books, and Charlotte's Web. I just love that whole series by E.B. White. So I was, I just love, love reading. And being in school, I went to, you know, of course, high school and college. And then I met John, my, my partner, and we've been together now 36 years. And along the way, we had a baby. Her name is Gabby, and she's not a baby anymore. She's now 27 years old, and guess what? She's a teacher. She's a fifth grade teacher now up in Washington State, and we're very proud of her. When she was a little girl, I just loved reading books to her, picture books. So one of the things that inspired me to start writing picture books was just remembering what a special time that was for us as parents reading to her. So I just wanted to put books out into the world that parents like yourselves could read to your children. I really, it's important to me to write books where kids can see themselves in the books. And I, I tend to write books that I wish I had as a little boy. So that's part of my inspiration as well. Now, what inspired me to write this book in particular, Accordionly, Abuelo and Opa Make Music? Well, it started with my family, like I said. This is an image of my mother when she was a little girl standing next to my tia and mis abuelos. Uh, this is in Southern California. So my, my mother is of Mexican-American descent. And uh, when I grew up, I was surrounded by the culture and tradition of, of um, Mexico. And it just was you know, beautiful for me from the food to the clothing to the music. So that was part of my inspiration. Together with, this is an image of my father who, luck! He played the accordion when he was a little boy. He's standing next to his brother in front of my grandparents who are who are both born in Switzerland. So my father is Swiss American. So I, I really wanted to write a book that demonstrated how do you bring the two cultures of your family together, especially when they're very different. So it turns out the accordion is a very popular instrument in both cultures. Mexican culture and Swiss with German culture. And so when I was a little boy, when my grandparents used to come visit, they didn't speak each other's languages, Spanish and Swiss German or German. And so when my father would play the accordion, it would just unite everyone, the music, the singing, the dancing. So it was just one of those things, those common threads that connected family. So I thought, you know, there are lots and lots of families that are formed by different cultures and different races, as you can see here. Many, many of you perhaps come from families where different races and cultures come together. And so this book is really an invitation for you to think about, oh, what are those things that connect us? What are those things that connect the two sides of my family together? So I hope this, this book inspires uh, that for you guys. So this particular book is a story of a little boy who brings the two cultures of his family together through music, the music of the accordion with the help of his grandfathers. 
uh, Bueno and Opa. And I'm going to be reading this book to you uh, a bit later, which I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to do. So think about what your, your family trees look like as well. So since the accordion plays a central role in this book, I thought, let's talk a, let's talk a bit about accordions themselves, the instrument. Um, in case you don't know what it is, or maybe you, you've seen it, some accordions just have buttons. I think they're beautiful, beautiful instruments, but some have a keyboard and buttons. We're going to hear uh, the accordion a bit later. Um, anyway, I thought you should have a look at what these, what this beautiful instrument looks like. Now, the accordion plays a role in many, many cultures, as I mentioned about my family, Swiss culture. Here's a picture here in Mexican culture, in mariachi bands, the accordion is, is often present, and in many other cultures as well. I thought it'd be fun to just hear a little sample of accordion music. In this first clip, this, is, this comes from Switzerland, the woman who's singing is actually yodeling. Uh, which I mentioned in, in the book. And uh, yodeling is a ki kind of singing that's very difficult to do, but it's just sort of fun to listen to. So let's let's have a, a listen. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And it's it's super different, right? Now, here's what the accordion sounds like in in um, traditional ranchera music. These little boys, I believe, are from southern Texas. Let's listen. And watch the horse in the background. The horse is interested too in the music. <laughs> Hey, horsey. Of course, you like the accordion music too. <laughs> 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 Super cute. Okay. It turns out there are festivals, accordion festivals throughout the country. I couldn't believe it. I just went to one in, in California where I live called the Kutati uh, Accordion Festival, but they're all over the country. Uh, the range from polka to Cajun to Tejano music. Uh, San Antonio has an incredible uh, accordion festival, the Tejano Conjunto Festival. So here are some images from different festivals. And here's a map of the country. The stars represent all the different accordion festivals that exist. Look how many there are. And uh, several in Texas, including in Richardson and Austin and Houston and San Antonio and throughout the world. So the accordion is just much more popular than I thought it uh, it was. So this just gives you a sample of how many festivals there are. I thought I would just note for your interest, how did the accordion get to Texas? It's thought that uh, German and Czech farmers in the late 19th century brought the accordion to the hill country of, of Texas and that the locals, the Hispanic farm hands, also caught uh, interest in it. So it, I think, arrived in the New Braunfels area, San Antonio and Austin, and made its way down to the Rio Grande and Corpus Christi, and then up through Houston, East Texas, and Dallas, Fort Worth. Dallas, I'm sorry, Texas is a huge state, as you guys know, so you're super lucky to have quite a range of accordion music, the German Czech, the original music that came in, and then the, the Zydeco, the Cajun influence Zydeco uh, music, and then the uh, Tejano, which uh, has a beautiful, beautiful uh, sound to it. So if you have a chance to listen to all different kinds of accordion music at these different festivals, it, it's incredible. Okay, I'm going to switch gears a bit because I wanted to share with you a bit about how do you make picture books? How do the words and the illustrations come together? You start with the story, of course, and I'm the, the author, so I, I put the words together, but then the words, the story, get uh, they get handed off to the illustrator. In this case, it's Priscilla Budas, and she matches the uh, illustrations with the words, but then the illustrations add their own sort of dimension to the story as well. 
And with illustrations, you use a lot of facial expressions, a lot of body language to communicate what's going on. In this case, well, you'll hear this in the story in a few minutes, but this is when they're all together, but they're really silent. So you can see the boy here is very thoughtful and the two grandfathers are together, but kind of not together. They're playing cards and taking a walk, very silent. So the, the facial expressions and the body language communicate a lot. And here, Priscilla wanted to show you that it doesn't take much to change one expression to another and communicate very different feelings. See the eyebrows change a little, the mouth changes a little to communicate. He looks a little sad here. He looks angry here. He looks kind of thoughtful here. So just a slight change of the line can communicate a very different feeling. And in a similar way, our bodies express a lot. This boy is dancing, he looks happy. Here he looks like he's sort of deep in thought. He looks like he's happy here, kind of sad here. So you'll see in the book how body language really communicates a lot in the story. Priscilla wanted you to see how she begins with just rough sketches, just to kind of position where people will go on the page, right? And then fill in some details like the facial expressions, right? And finally, add color. That's mm. called the final art. So it's really quite a, uh, a process. Now, here's a special treat. Priscilla taped how she works. She wanted you to see how she drew for this book. This video is about 10 minutes long, so we may not watch all of it, but I wanted you to hear directly from her um, how she does her work. For those of you who uh, are interested and who might even be interested in becoming authors or illustrators, here's a nice look at how an illustrator works. So let's listen to Priscilla. Priscilla. Hi, I'm Priscilla Burris, the illustrator for Accordionly, a new picture book coming out in a few days. Today I'd like to show you a little bit of sketching and some fun changes I'm gonna make in the main character little boy from this book. Here is a sketch of the little boy, similar to what's on the cover, except with his arms in a different direction. And what I've done is I've already added on the same little boy, but I'm gonna make some changes. I work digitally with a stylus and this is what I work with as if it were my pencil or my paintbrush. So first of all, what I'd like to do is change his body language, change what he's doing with every image of him. So what I've done is I've roughed up some ideas I had. And what I do here is I grab a very wide brush I love using many different types of brushes. So what I will do is use a very wide brush, very low color, just like you see there. And I will, I've done this with these three little characters here, same little character, but different poses. Now what I'd like to do is this is my idea. I think what I'll do is I gave them also I gave each of them an accordion to wear on their t-shirt. Mm -hmm. The same boy, but different poses, so. I'm wearing my t-shirt we too. <laughs> Grab another brush, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna show you how I will draw his body language changing from just standing still or having the same expression. So on the second boy right here, second one, I'm gonna make his mouth kind of, whoops, wrong color. Did you know that illustrators make mistakes all the time? We're always making mistakes and we have to correct them. It's part of our job and it's okay. It's part of what we do, it's part of the process. So now I've got it right, here we go. So I'm going to make his, whoops. All right, so I'm going to make his shirt, t-shirt here. This is going to be kind of sketchy, so forgive my 
little bit of messiness here. Messiness is kind of fun though. So here, whoops, that thumb looks too big. All right, let's make him a smaller thumb. There we go. All right, so he's just having a different expression than he does in the first character. I made his, I made his mouth, I gave that rough idea of a kind of like, what's going on here? It's fun to do different expressions that aren't just your typical sad, happy. I like to come up with different expressions. One of my favorite things to do is expressions on characters, body language or in the face or even from behind. Now to the second character, I'm gonna have him hollering, whoops, another mistake, that's okay. And he's got kind of missing a tooth there. All right, now here I put his hands because he's hollering to somebody, probably his friend next door. Come on over, let's have some fun. Let's play together. Something that we'll all be able to do. Whoops, that arm looks too big, doesn't it? Let's make that arm a little smaller. So let's say I make the arm really big and weird like that. What I can do is go back and I circle that little arm part and I change it, make it thinner. Not quite perfect, but that's okay. None of us are perfect. We just keep trying to make it work. Let's just say that's fine there. And I'm moving on to his feet. Now I've made his legs, instead of standing still, I want him to be running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase, I'm gonna take away, let me erase, I'll get the eraser. I'm gonna take away his legs and his shorts. Here we go, I'm erasing. And here we go. And I'm gonna make, have him running. Maybe he's calling his friend over to come on and play, or you want to play catch, or you want to play chase the ball, or chase the squirrel, whatever. And um, here he goes. Now, I think when I do a character in a book, one important part is to keep him consistent throughout the book. He has to look the same throughout the book. He cannot change and look very different. For example. If you look at any book that you like, check out the characters. They have to look alike throughout the whole book. If they change very diff to a very different character, it won't make sense. Illustrators work hard to make that happen. We want to be very careful that we keep the characters looking the same throughout the whole book. Now that shoe's not perfect, but again, it's okay. This last character, I'm gonna have him kind of, hmm, wondering about what's going on over there. Or what other expression does it look like? He could be thinking, hmm, no, I'm not sure about that. There, have you ever made that expression? And then I have him actually here tapping his foot. Mm-hmm, he's probably impatient about something, something that's going on that he's not He's not unhappy, but he's wondering. These are my un, these are my impatient lines here. All right, so let's get rid of, I'm gonna erase all. I'm gonna make the eraser really big because we're gonna get rid of the rough part. I call this a rough part behind. It just gives me an idea. It's a rough, like a rough draft. There, I'm gonna erase all that. Oh, he has too many legs. Let me take away this leg only, because he should have the other leg, don't you think? There we go. Oops, I forgot that one part on his mouth. Oh, and you know what else? Here's one last thing, little thing I want to show you. This boy here, if we get really close to his mouth, you can see where his the line is showing. It shouldn't be there, so I'm going to make the eraser smaller. 
And we're going to come in here and we're going to erase this line that's underneath his hand because you shouldn't be able to see that. So there's a lot of mistakes made when you're an illustrator and there's a lot of changes that we have to make. So if you can see here, he's standing like just wondering with his arms out, happy. Second boy, second time we should see the boy. He's wondering maybe. Third time he's yelling and running. And the fourth time he's kind of just has his hands on his hips and tapping his shoe so he's impatient about something. Okay. One last thing I'll do here is I'm gonna just have a little bit of fun with, pick a color, any color, and I'm just gonna show you a little bit of painting. So I'm gonna draw or paint the um, accordion here. I can go out of the lines, that's okay. Gosh, I love accordions. They make the happiest music. Mm -hmm. Yes, they Then do. let's change yes, this, let's give them a different color on each shirt, different accordion on each shirt. Green, what's your favorite color? Green is fun. Oh, I love orange. Let's find orange. A higher, bright orange. Who likes orange? I love orange. Okay, so he's got an orange accordion there. And let's just do a red one over here. Why not, right? Red is fun. So here's what I do. Once I do the colors, I'll go in and erase all the parts that aren't needed. There's a lot of ways we can do this when we work digitally, but I like doing this. It's just comfortable. Using an eraser, just like I would if I was doing it on paper, and erase some colors or erase some parts, and that's okay. Then I use a little hand tool and I move over, and you see what I'm doing. Another way I can do it is use a little tool that's called a lasso tool, and I circle it, and I cut it out. But again, like I said, I like using the eraser. So I'll just do it very quickly here and then run over here. Look at these two accordions, aren't they pretty? I hope you're enjoying this and I hope you get to hear an accordion music. Mariachis, mariachis or polka bands have wonderful, happy, lively and fun accordion music. And I sure hope you get to enjoy our new picture book accordingly. And I hope you've enjoyed this. My name is Priscilla Burris. I'm happy to be the illustrator for Accordingly, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Yay, yay. So I hope that you enjoyed that. I just think it's fun to watch an illustrator at work, especially, you know, there are different kinds of uh, methods and techniques. Some people actually draw or watercolor. And a lot of people today use the computer. So it was really cool to see someone use um, the tools that are available on the on the computer. Okay, so now I'm going to read accordingly to you. So I hope you guys are ready. Accordingly, Abuelo and Opa make music. The accordion is a funny looking instrument. Is it a little piano? Some kind of harmonica? My abuelo plays the accordion in a mariachi band. When they play it on chera music, he hoots and hollers louder than the rest. Abuelo, is that you? That sounds like my grandfather. That's exactly what he would do. So I love, love those uh, gritos. Okay. It's a fiesta every time he sings. And whenever we visit, my abuela makes tamales and arroz. My opa plays the accordion in a polka band. When they play, he belts out a yodel that makes the windows shake. <gasps> opa, is that you? <laughs> That's yodeling, and that's what my grandfather on the other side of my family sounded like. He's the only person we know who yodels. And whenever we visit, my oma's lechuchen and hot chocolate makes me feel right at home. 
Abuelo and Opa always bring their accordions when they each visit me. Music and singing fills our home. Sometimes I get up and move like a flacorico dancer. Other times I do the polka. The first time my grandparents were all together, one side of the table was really quiet. My grandpas couldn't speak each other's language, so they didn't say much to one another. They said please and thank you a lot, but not much else. We spent the day together in silence. We exchanged glances, but not words. We listened to the birds sing, but we didn't make a sound. Oh, My parents noticed the silence too and wondered if something was wrong. ¿Qué pasa? asked mom. Abuelo simply grumbled. ¿Vas islos? asked dad. Opa just scrunched his face. The silence made me sad. But that's when I had an idea. I think the idea has to do with an accordion, but let's find out. I asked Abuelo to get his accordion. Then I asked Opa to get his accordion. At first, Abuelo and Opa just stared at one another, but, but then they just broke into laughter. Abuelo strapped on his accordion and started to play La Chariana. Opa and I listened, and Opa watched Abuelo very carefully. Opa began playing the Yoro Polka. Abuelo and I listened, and Abuelo watched Opa very carefully. So look, they're teaching each other the music of their countries. Let's see what happens next. Soon they were playing along and singing together. A blending of yodels and hollers broke the silence. Music filled our house once again. Watching Abuelo and Opa made my heart sing with happiness with all my family together in harmony accordionly. So that's the story of accordionly. And the book ends with uh, images that I shared with you before. And look, the images on the bottom, that's the illustrator Priscilla's family. And guess what? Her father played the accordion too. Isn't that funny? So I hope this book encourages you to think of the different connections, the different threads that, that connect us all and the different sides of your family. If you have a family with different cultures together, just think about what are those things that bring them together. And I just wanna end on a note that has to do with writing or illustrating. For anyone who's interested uh, in, in becoming an author or, or, or illustrator, who kids who just wanna tell stories, if you wanna write, just start writing. If you wanna be a writer, you, you, you write. But don't worry about how it sounds or spelling. Just be creative and tell the stories you wanna tell. There may be stories that only you can tell because they're so unique to who you are. And if you wanna to draw to match the, the words that you're writing, then draw. Just pick up a sketch pad and start drawing. So you just have to start somewhere and you know, don't worry about perfect because we're imperfect, right? And if you really want to create a story, um, you just write it down at first and you, then you sort of work on it and edit it. But hopefully it's about having fun, putting the story down and then drawing. So thank you so much for your attention and I'm happy to answer any, any questions folks might have um, about about any of this, but thank you. Excuse me, do you know how to play the accordion? That is such a good question. Is, is Are you Alyssa? What's your name? Amelia. Amelia. Look, um, so my father, uh, who actually died a few years ago, I just got his accordion not that long ago. It was... Wow. Uh, it was given to me, and the short answer is no, I don't know how to play, but guess what? Now that I have his accordion, I'm going to start taking lessons to learn how to play. I don't think, it doesn't look very easy to me, um, but I'm going to start taking lessons using my father's accordion, which I'm very excited about. I hope I get to sound like him 
one day because I got to have lots of fond memories of him playing the accordion when I was a little boy. <laughs> Amelia, do you know how to play the accordion? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. I think we're lucky we get to we get to hear um someone play the accordion in a little bit. Michael, we have another question from Zev, who is five years old, asking okay. why do you write so many books? The short answer is because I love it. Um I just like the the craft of writing books but like I mentioned before I really think carefully about the kinds of stories that I want to tell and so the two key reasons really are I think about books I wish I had read when I was a little boy but also I think there are a lot of books out there that don't necessarily have um, the faces of kids that I think should be more represented in books. So I'm really working on, on books that um, highlight uh, different kinds of kids and different kinds of families so that kids can see themselves in books. So that's that's why I write. And, and again, mostly because I love it. I just love the, the process of creating stories and working with illustrators and then being able to share them with, with folks like you all. You know, I get to... Um, you know, these are, these are like parties that we get to have together and sharing these stories. So mostly because it's fun. Okay, we have another question for you. Why are there so much of the same books in the background? I didn't quite hear that question. Oh, why do you have so many copies of your book in the background of your oh, office? That's a good question. <laughs> you know, my office doesn't normally look like this. I set it up this way because we were having a, an accordion party. So I thought it would look kind of fun and festive uh, for our time together to have the books there, but they're not normally there. <laughs> Yeah. If anybody would like to borrow a copy of Accordingly, we have a couple of copies in the library, so you're welcome to come and check them out after the presentation. So if we don't have any more questions, who wants to hear the accordion? I know I do. I do. I do. I do. Uh, what a wonderful presentation, Michael. Thank you for that. Um, that brings a lot of memories for me uh, growing up. Um, hello to you all. My name is Nicolás Valdez. Uh, I and a uh, musician, as well as an actor, playwright, and director. Um, I grew up playing the accordion, taking lessons at, uh, here in town at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center on the west side of San Antonio. I come from a tradition of accordion playing uh, that uh, Michael mentions in his book called Conjunto. Um, a lot of people, when they think of accordion uh, music from South Texas along the border region, they think about Norteño, Tejano and Conjunto. Um, the kind of music that I learned growing up playing was very traditional Conjunto music, which was sort of the, it came before what we now know as sort of Tejano and Norteño. It's a very traditional sound. Accordions, uh, like Michael mentions in his book, were introduced into the area around the mid 1800s, 1830s, 1850s, through a big wave of immigration, Germanic immigration. And what they settled, what they called the German Belt in Central Texas. And the Mexican farm workers that were in those areas began to listen to that music. And the first kind of music they played was imitations of these very European styles of vocals, right? So I can play an example for you. Um, this is a, a, a song that sort of all the beginner students learn, and uh, um, it's called La Piedra. <laughs> Thank you. 
types of accordions, right? And the two accordions that his grandfather's played, you notice, were the piano accordions. And the big difference between these types of accordions is that the piano is what they call a chromatic uh, instrument, chromatic. So that means that every piano key is the same whether you play it in or going out. And it works like a piano. The diatonic button accordion, this is a three row, we call it a diatonic accordion. Every button has a different sound in or out. So it's a little bit more complicated when you're playing, right? Because on a piano accordion, if you run out of air, you can just go the other way. Whereas on this accordion, you have to be a little bit more, you have to be thinking about it a little bit more, right? And this little button here, I call it a little cheater button. This allows you to open up the valves here and get more air if you need to. Now this is called the bellows, right? And this works like your lungs, right? It breathes. And inside of the accordion here, for every row of buttons, there is what they call the long reed block. It's a block of wood, long like that, and it has little reeds. How many of y'all are familiar with the harmonica? Uh. Yeah, right, harmonica? What do you do with the harmonica? You blow in and out of the harmonica, right? And it makes a sound. So inside of the accordion, there's basically three big harmonicas, right? And so that's how the accordion functions. Now, like I was saying, the, uh, the first kind of music that the, uh, the Mexican American population in this area started to play mimics those old German vocals, right? And then they started kind of taking that sound and creating their own things. And when people think about sort of conjunto music, you know, we think generally about polka, pupa kind of music, right? But there's a variety of sounds in conjunto music as a genre. There are, for example, waltzes, um, what they call chauvises and redobas. So here's one, uh, this is a waltz called the Salvador Bats. I haven't played this well. Sometimes I just have to like, it's, I know that it's in my body, it's in my muscle memory. And so sometimes I just have to like close off everything else and just trust that like it'll come out. Um, <laughs> it's one of the times it does. But I'll tell you this is the other thing too. When I first started taking lessons, when I first started learning the accordion, um, like it wasn't the coolest instrument to play. <laughs> um, at that time, like, I mean, I feel like the accordion has made a resurgence uh, in, our, in, our, in our community. But like the only example people had at that time was Steve Burkle, right? <laughs> Family matters. And so like, you know, my friends, my grandfather in particular, uh, was the one who really kind of pushed me uh, to take lessons. And at, at first they sort of had to drag me into the room um, and it was a little overwhelming. The, the accordion was like bigger than me, you know. My first instructor was, uh, was a little rough, you know, and push school and yell at you, and really kind of scared. But, but I learned quickly 
to appreciate the culture, right? And especially building this relationship with my grandparents. Uh, my grandfather was so proud, right? He wasn't a musician, but he loved Konfunto music. Um, him and my grandmother uh, opened up a dance hall in Michigan during the 50s, right? After World War II, they moved up north, and there was communities of Mexican-American populations there, right? And of course, the music from Texas went up to those communities. Wow. So they created a dance hall, one of the first in the area that featured Konfunto music. And so my grandfather was what to talk to have a dance, right? He would put me on his feet and shuffle me around. And my grandfather had a bad leg, and so he had this kind of limp. So I learned to dance like that too. Uh, uh, let's see. Here's another example of a kind of different type of style that is still a beautiful genre. Uh, this is a chotis. If y'all are interested, you can check out www.conjuntoblues, conjunto, C-O-N-G-J-U-N-T-O, blues, dot um, com. Um, and the show, uh, there's some video examples, some excerpts from the show. Uh, during the pandemic, we were able to film it. And so mm -hmm. I have this hour-long uh, filmed version of the show, which I encourage y'all to check out. Um, but because the culture and the, like I said, the relationship with my grandparents was so influential to me. Um, it only made sense that uh, I, I wrote it before. And like Michael says, right, um, it's really important for me to talk about how Confunto music is so important in this region and for uh, the Mexican American community at large, right? Um, it is very much an American form of um, musical expression, like the blues, like Zydeco, right? Zydeco, our neighbors, right, just to, uh, in the Louisiana, you know, have this beautiful music that's very much like sort of Tejano culture, right? Uh, it is, a, instead of the German influence, it's a French Creole influence, right? But they have big parties on the ranchos, and they wear cowboy hats and boots, and they play important music. But instead of menudo, they eat gumbo, right? Like, so it's, like, it's so similar. And in the times that I've performed my show, I, I, it never ceases to amaze me how many different people from, like Michael says, from all over the world, right, cultures from all over the place, they come to me and they tell me, wow, oh, my grandfather played the accordion, my uncle played the accordion. Um, and so the accordion is something that, there's something really magical about the sound of the accordion that just immediately takes you back, right, somewhere in our existence. It seems it's something that's in all of our veins. And it's heard all over the world, recording music all over the world in different forms. Um, let's see, I want to play something. This is something that I picked up recently off of an album of a, a musician. He's from South Texas. 
I just thought it was a beautiful song. It's in a very strange minor key. And when you talk about minors, they sound sort of sad and weird, right? So like, this is a, uh, uh, I think, let's see, a C. This is a C major. And this is a D minor. Right? So it sounds sort of like, it's a little bit more emotional, right? And the accordion, obviously, is such an emotive instrument. It can be really happy, be really sad or thoughtful. So, it can be kind of scary. I have a question. I was wondering what you might say to uh, a child who might be interested in learning how to play the accordion. How do you get started? That's me? What would you recommend? Yeah, well, that's a great question. I mean, um, so specifically for like the music, right? When I first started playing, it was very much an oral tradition and it still is in right? Like you have to know somebody, either a family member, uncle, grandparent, or somebody in the neighborhood. When the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center on the West Side opened, they offered the first time Conjunto music classes for the general public. And so I was one of the first people to be able to get into that program. Now there's Conjunto classes and recording classes all over the city. Uh, there's uh, several schools that offer recording programs. There's even a, an recording uh, program at Biological College as well. There is the Conjunto Heritage Taller is an organization uh, in San Antonio that teaches a traditional, not only accordion, but the traditional accompaniment, which is the 12 string bajo sexto, uh, which is sort of like, you know, the rice and beans of the music, right? <laughs> um, but, um, you know, the, the accordion, like, I mean, people sometimes ask me, is, is it hard to learn? Um, everything is kind of hard to learn, right? That's what learning is. Um, and like anything else, it takes a ton of practice. To be honest, it took me a long time to figure that out. I was like, oh yeah, you need to practice every day uh, to actually get good at what you're doing. But, um, you know, the, I will also suggest now with technology, like if you can get your hands on a recording, um, YouTube, oh my Lord, like there's so much stuff you can find just on YouTube, tutorials from beginner to advanced students on just about any type of recording from pianos to buttons. Um, the, the button accordion is the most popular accordion in this area, so those probably what you'll find the most, like at a pawn shop, secondhand store, the music store. Um, but piano accordion, if you have a basic understanding of some like music theory or know how to play piano, that's probably easier than diving right into the diatonic accordion. But um, I encourage folks, I mean, music opened up a world for me, and so I, you know, I'm an arts and culture. For young people, I think it's important um, in anything. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much. So, I just wanted to thank you so much for 
Wow, you're you're so gifted. The music is beautiful. You're quite the storyteller yourself. So thank you very much for, for being part of this. Of course, thank you, Mark. Congratulations on your book. Thank you all. I'm sorry, what was that? Can we play one more song? Sure. Uh, so uh, you heard me on the first song playing the bass. This, so this is the, the, the accordion here has like your melodic, this is like your main, right? And then your bass buttons are your accompaniment. Um, not a lot of accordion players play the bass anymore. They kind of all are here. And so, um, and you can't accompany yourself in every key. It gets complicated in the music theory, right? There. But I'll play one with the oh, one the band. I have a question about the bass actually. Are they the same going in and out? Or no, so like the like the diatonic on this side right here. So you have your major by G, C, and F, and then you have a D minor, D minor, and G minor, and B flat. So anyway, okay, so here's one. This is called a point so this is actually one that I wrote. Uh, little vocal goes like this. <laughs> 